Hi, I'm Barry Duke, Vice President of Suppressors and Weapons at Surefire. You've already seen the turning center, now we're going to walk you through the suppressor manufacturing. So all the parts, uh, laser welded, even in this case we got our different adapters coming out, they're precision clean. This is heat, detergent, ultrasonic, all in one machine so the parts come out with no impurities on them. We've got some, some of our heat treat ovens here uh, going through. We try to do everything in-house so we can control the quality and give you the best possible part. The adapters, when they're going through uh, Deber, we've automated the Deber with computer controlled unit. That gives us consistent parts quality coming out of the machine every time. Next up is the welding of the suppressor inner core. We switched over from a manual welding process a few years ago to laser. And what we're able to do with that is more than double our strength and just light years better on consistency because it's a really precise computer controlled process start out with parts uh, parts fixtured up in a line. They go into the welder. You can watch the thing working. We have uh, precision laser welds. And when I first looked at these, we started exploring the technology a number of years ago. I was going, man, how can this weld be strong? We did a series of pull tests, lab experiments, and turned out we were double the strength we were with the manual weld. And then if you notice, the part isn't all heat saturated, and that helps keep the part straight for the welding process or for the manufacturing process. And the welds are sequenced in order to uh, avoid warping. Uh, and overall, just a much more advanced process. So notice going through, every suppressor has got little barcode tags with it. What that's doing is actually uh, linking which operator did which operation on which machine, which, which series of parts and it gives us full traceability back for the utmost in quality. So up next, we're gonna head around to the other side and parts are gonna come through here. They'll come out the wall on the other end and we'll go into uh, the next step manufacturing process. Right here, the suppressors have gone into a straightening cell and they'll look at the suppressor, put it on a precision fixture that mounts it like it is on the weapon. If for any reason that it came out out of true, They'll actually, they won't straighten it mechanically. They'll actually apply heat to it and straighten the metal without ever actually laying a hand on it. Then after that, we come out here to the tube welding process. The core has been laser welded. Uh, now he's gonna take the inner assembly, which has been straightness check. He's gonna press the tube onto the inner assembly of the suppressor and then move on to laser welding. So here, the outer tube's getting laser welded on at the front and the rear of the tube. So the one su suppressor will be the prior suppressor is allowed to cool. That's where he just switched out to a different suppressor. And he's going to re recheck straightness, all focused on the bore of the suppressor, mounted the same way it is when it goes on the weapon. Next, we're going to go into the EDM machining process. These suppressors, even after these two welds, and point out again, there's not uh, heat discoloration on this because the lasers are so effective. They, they put heat only where it's needed. The suppressor, the last one came out, you know, 2000's TIR, you know, out of, out of perfect after two different welding processes. But we still take and put it in the EDM and what we're gonna be doing with the EDM machine is mounting it just like it is when it's on the weapon. And we're gonna cut through and it's gonna lightly uh, kiss the inside of the bore and open it up to a precise spec. And the EDM machine, it's an electrically charged wire. So as it cuts, if you look at this thing, it looks like a fish tank. Everything's underwater during the cutting process. And this wire is flowing through and that wire is cutting a perfect circle inside the suppressor. Very precise machining process. As you know, we have multiple EDM machines or what you can see here. That's because anytime we have a slower operation, we double it or triple it in order to keep the line flowing in a consistent pattern. Up next is our paint robot. What you have here is a robot that will take the uh, suppressors off of the table, put them in, automatically bead blast them, and puts them in and automatically paints them. And you might ask, why do we automate the bead blast station? 
And reason being, that's one of the first things I did, even back when we were manually painting suppressors, I automated it because I didn't want somebody sitting there, you know, hung over on a Thursday morning, Friday morning, because they went out and tied one on during the week, and they blast a thin spot in the side of the tube, and the first guy that finds out about it is the soldier downrange that, you know, has a thin spot in his suppressor that fails him. So by automating the process, we went from, you know, more of a manual automated one to a complete robot, computer controlled. We can control exactly how much blast goes on the tube, so there's no chance of a thin spot being blast in it. Blasting's required to get a proper finish and get to adhere. Uh, after it blasts, the robot takes it over and it's painted with Cerakote by the robot and then put on a drying rack to dry. I'm Dennis Radgowski and I'm the Suppressor and Weapons Division Operations Director. Quality checks through the manufacturing process, like I said, we do it at every step. So we check the total indicated run out um, at stack and load, so we know where it's at. We put it within spec, we'll put it on the welder, we'll weld it, we'll check the indicated run out, and we track all of this. We do our scientific data collection a lot different than other companies. When I first came on board setting up the, the initial processes for manufacturing, Coming from the aerospace industry, my background was doing a lot of uh, process controls and minimizing variability. And, and when we set up the processes initially, implementing those procedures and processes and tracking allowed us to make a better product quicker and more reliable. A testament to our quality and the processes we have in place shows in, the, in our RMA percentage, we get less than a percent back from the total produced of that percent that comes back, the largest percentage of that is end user. Quality control, you know, can't be overstressed. Anytime we put a new suppressor on the line, the first, first suppressor that comes off, we EDM little pie slices out of it. So what that means, uh, you know, coming in and just, uh, we take a little chunk out with the EDM. These are molded into this block, which is then micro polished and what these little hockey pucks uh, tell us uh, going in. And we put these under a microscope. We can check for weld penetration, porosity, any imperfections that might cause that suppressor to have trouble in the future and make sure it's to the Surefire standards. We're an ISO 9001 certified facility. The parts come in, we've got coordinate measuring machines, Rockwell hardness testers, spectrometers, whatever is required to fully meet all ISO standards. You've seen our index machines. We also have Swiss machines for certain parts. And in some cases, uh, it's uh, when we're in a back order status right now, we're putting every machine we can on making these parts. So right now in this Swiss, we're actually running war comps to supplement the parts coming out of the turning center. I'm Paul Glass with Surefire the Suppressor Division. One of the unique things we do here is we test fire every center fire suppressor that we manufacture for accuracy, and that's part of the process we're going to be showing you today. We test fire all of our center fire suppressors to ensure accuracy and repeatability, just in case they end up in harm's way. So we treat every one of them as if they're going to be used in a delicate situation that requires accuracy and repeatability and durability. The bullet flight path is shot through a tunnel at the 100 yard distance. We use a tunnel to help eliminate wind as a variable. For test fire, we use a rail gun setup. It's bolted to a concrete table. We use bat actions and uh, extremely heavy, durable barrels. And all that is done to basically eliminate the variables of a human shooting the suppressor for accuracy. We wanna know what the suppressor can do. So we try to eliminate those variables that we can. Our accuracy standard is one MOA. So what we're testing out here is to verify that every suppressor manufactured meets or exceeds that, that accuracy standard. What we do is baseline the unsuppressed weapon system for the computer, and then we start to roll into running the process of testing the suppressors against that baseline system. What we're testing is accuracy and repeatability. The accuracy portion to make sure that our group sizes are under one MOA, which is roughly an inch at 100 yards. Basically what that means is the suppressor can be removed and reattached and our point of impact doesn't move beyond what it was originally. We start the process by baselining the unsuppressed barrel and once we have that, we start running into the suppressors themselves, using them on the same barrel and checking for the shift, POI shift distance and the accuracy compared to that of the unsuppressed weapon system. We shoot a three round group through every suppressor and once they pass, the targets are downloaded, saved, and we move on to the next suppressor. 
suppressor system. In the event a suppressor fails test fire, the procedure is to take it back to the facility, run it through QC, try to isolate the issue, and if it's repairable, we repair it and retest it and if it's not repairable, it's destroyed. Although the test fire process is a logistical burden for Surefire, we feel it's essential to verify every product that goes out the door meets our strict standards. To finalize the process after the suppressors come back from test fire, they'll go through a final QC check, making sure that everything's perfect. Then they'll go through a packaging process and get put in a sealed box that's stored with an RFID tag uh, in the vaults, ready for going out as soon as ATF tells us we can. Okay, this is our R&D machine shop. We have manual machines mixed in with CNC's. We've got some extremely skilled manual guys, and you might think, hey, this is the world of modern CNC. Well, CNC's are great when you have to build multiple parts. If I'm building one prototype of something, a lot of times I can get that prototype, get to the range and test it faster with a manual guy than I can uh, getting it scheduled into a CNC and getting it programmed. You know, tooling, special tooling needs to be ordered, things of that nature. So in this shop, we got machines building special parts for different prototype suppressors and adapters that we're currently in development on. And one of the things that you'll notice as we start going through is this R&D shop has more capability than a lot of people's manufacturing floors. But in order to build the very best prototypes, get them to market as soon as possible as production items, we need the best equipment. This isn't something that we'd normally show. It's kind of like showing somebody your dirty closet, but this is just tens of thousands of hours of R&D suppressors that we've built over the years. When somebody thinks that we accidentally just stumbled into a suppressor design, we have literally built just thousands of prototype suppressors. You know, our priorities in the past have been point of impact repeatability because if you can't take the suppressor off, put it back on the rifle whenever you want to and have it go back to the exact same point of impact, it's really a hobbyist item and we build items focused on supporting the warfighter. Then we get into size, weight, durability, flash, sound, back pressure. And those, you know, we started out as the lowest back pressure suppressor on the market. We were 30 to 60% less than everybody else because we had our competitors chasing only sound where we were looking on a complete package that you can throw it on your rifle and your rifle still works. And there's a lot of suppressors that you put on semi-autos and different gas guns and full autos that increase the cyclic rate so much that the weapon quits functioning or you're getting gas so bad you can't shoot it. Now there's one manufacturer out there that focuses solely on cyclic rate at the expense of sound and flash, and mostly flash. We were out, you get that, you get a suppressor hot. We had one of the competitors out recently at round 16 of shooting uh, two rounds a second. It started having a big old flame out the front. Well, that big old flame draws fire. Where I see ourselves going in the future is to retain our sound, flash, size, weight, durability performance, and also eliminate back pressure. So that's the goal, that's where I'm focused right now, and we will achieve it.